Hello, this is John from caveprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to look at the read line function that lets you get input from the user. And we're going to create a interactive program. So I'm going to give you an exercise that you can try if you want to. And I'm going to show you how you can do that exercise. The read line function lets you get a line of text from the console. Let's first prompt the user to enter some text. I'm just going to use print here because I want them to be able to enter the text on the same line as the text that I'm going to use to tell them to enter it. So let's write here, enter some text. And we can have like maybe a little sort of angle bracket or something to make it look kind of like a prompt. Then to actually get the text, we're going to need a variable to store it in. So let's write val text equals, and I'm going to use read ln. There's also read line. If you've seen an older version of Kotlin, read ln used to be called read line, but we're going to use this more modern version, read ln, which I'm going to call read line anyway, because it's that's what it's short for. And then let's see what text the user has actually entered. So I'm going to write here, let's use print line for this one. You entered and if you remember to embed the contents of a variable into a string, we can use dollar and the name of the variable. Let's try out this little program. So it says enter some text. And because I use print instead of print line, I can actually enter the text on the same line as this text. I'm going to write here, hello, and then hit return because read line only reads complete lines. So hit return and it says, you entered hello. Now here's a little challenge for you. One meter is apparently equal to 3.28 feet. So for example, if I look up the height of Mount Everest, sometimes I find I get it in meters, sometimes feet. In the US, probably feet is more common, I'm guessing. In the UK, we use both really, feet and meters. And in the rest of Europe, probably they're using meters. So the challenge here is to write a program that asks the user to enter a distance in meters, and it then tells you what that distance is in feet. If you've been programming for a while in other languages, you'll probably find that fairly easy. If you're a new programmer, it might be quite hard, but I would say, try to write what bits you can. Don't forget, write a little bit and then run your program to check that it works as you expect, then add another little bit and run it again and so on. And just write as much as you can and see where you get. It's actually not a long program at all. Okay, so pause the video if you want to try that because I'm going to show you now how we can do it. So we can actually adapt this small program that we've already got. So instead of saying enter some text, let's say enter a distance in meters. Or you can spell it the American way if you like, for that matter. So they're going to enter a distance in meters and that's going to end up in this variable here. Let's write meters. I'm going to comment this line out for a minute because it's not working because text doesn't exist anymore. Now let's do the conversion. So we can use a variable to store the result. Let's create a variable called feet and set that equal to whatever we've got in meters times 3.28. Now this isn't going to work. So this is kind of a naive implementation here, but I want to show you what happens if you get this wrong. So let's assume that it does work, which it, you can already see it doesn't because this asterisk has turned red. And now we can say here, dollar meters is equal to dollar feet. And we want to actually explain what that is. Let's say dollar meters meters is equal to dollar feet feet. So we can't actually run this. If I hover over the asterisk, I can get a bit more information. It says unresolved reference. But it's not really obvious what it's talking about if you're new to this. It says something about receiver type mismatch. And in fact, the problem here is this is a string. Remember, we have to convert it. So we could convert it either to a double or to an int. Let's write dot two double. So the user can enter floating point numbers. And now it should work. It says enter a distance in meters. And I'll enter like a thousand or something. And if I hit return, it says a thousand meters is equal to three to eight zero point zero feet, which is correct. Now, a couple of things here. Firstly, when we cite a distance in meters, usually we just put a small m after the distance. But if I try to do that here, it's going to think this small m is part of this variable name and it turns red. 
because there is no variable called meters m. To avoid that, we can put curly brackets around the name of the variable like this. And now that's just interpreted as a normal m. Similarly, if I want to put ft for feet here, we can put curly brackets after the dollar sign just around the name of the variable to make it clear which is the actual variable name. Now, if we run this, let's try 2000 meters and that's equal to 6560 feet. And you can see we've got this annotation now where it says 2000m is equal to 6560.0 ft. By the way, this, which we call a method call, is not changing this meters variable at all. Let's check the type of meters down here. So I'm going to write print ln meters, and we're going to use the same technique that we previously used in this course, double colon, then class, then dot simple name to find out what type meters is. Let's run this. So I have to enter a distance and you can see that meters is still of type string, even down here, even after we've done this. All this is doing is looking at this variable, converting it to a floating point value and returning it so that it can be used in this calculation. So this whole thing evaluates to a floating point number, but the actual meters variable is still a string because we just read it from the console. It's still a string down here. This hasn't changed it at all. So if you're new to programming, I definitely recommend trying to write this program yourself. And you can try to write something even more complicated if you get the hang of it, like converting Celsius to Fahrenheit or something. This is a really good thing just to practice getting used to working with variables. That's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.